Welcome to We Are Soldiers. This is Vijahat Saeed Khan. This is the beginning of the most comprehensive series ever produced on the country's armed forces. Today and over the next few weeks, you will get an in-depth view and analysis of the way Pakistan's armed forces work, function and train. You will actually see the men and the machines in action, performing major and minor operations of war. You will also gain access to information that focuses on the prevailing security situation in Pakistan and the region and how that affects the tactics of such operations. And you will be taken to places that you might have heard about but perhaps not seen. From Siachen to Sir Creek, Waziristan to the line of control, you will bear witness to the art and science of soldiering in a country which many consider the eye of the global security storm. This is Dawn News and you are watching We Are Soldiers. Stay tuned. There are three branches of Pakistan's armed forces, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. Effectively, the Pakistani military machine is the sixth largest in the world. The Army is the largest branch with an estimated 550,000 active troops. The Army is a land-based operations force, though it has aviation and amphibious assets as well. The Army is tightly organized into large formations called corps. There are nine corps of the Pakistan Army, with each corps led by a three-star Lieutenant General. Also having corps status is the Strategic Force Command, which controls the country's nuclear arsenal. Together, the corps form the functional backbone of Army operations. The generals who lead these corps are technically the Army's most powerful operational officers, apart from the Chief of Army Staff, a four-star general whom they all report to. Each corps has a certain specified number of divisions. If the corps are the backbone, then these divisions or divs are the arms. Every corps has a particular makeup of divisions. The makeup depends on the strategic and tactical imperatives of the location and the army's threat perception, security climate and terrain of that location. For example, most of Pakistan's armored divisions, meaning those divs which are equipped with tanks, are in cores located in the plains of Punjab and the deserts of Sin. That's because, although the army has traditionally perceived a threat from across the eastern border, it is only in the terrain of the plains and the deserts where tanks can actually function and where there is a perceived armored threat from across the border. Meanwhile, divisions of corps that are located in terrains inhospitable to the movement of heavy vehicles like along the line of control and in Fatah and Swat are primarily infantry based, meaning they rely heavily on foot soldiers to do the fighting. Considering that the army depends on a hierarchical superstructure because of its size and broad operational scope, the chain of command is the focal point of all army activities. Corps are led by lieutenant generals, divisions by major generals, also called two stars or GOCs, short for general officer commanding. Then, each division comprises of brigades, led by brigadiers, and each brigade is responsible for what is perhaps the lowest common denominator of the army's organizational hierarchy, the unit. The unit is the basic building block of the army. While corps, divisions, and even brigades have multiple tasks to perform, ranging from planning logistics and coordinating with the Air Force or the Navy and other corps, divs, and brigades, Units have a specialized role. Always having a lieutenant colonel as its commanding officer, the unit has a single function, to fight or support the fight in accordance with the arm it belongs to. Arms are the specialized task-specific centers of the army. They are broken down into two categories, fighting arms and supporting arms. Units from fighting arms engage in frontline combat operations. Supporting arms units play a vital role in supplementing those combat operations. The Armored Corps, which is based on tanks, the infantry, which is made up of foot soldiers, and the artillery, which uses heavy, long-range guns, are the fighting arms of the Pakistan Army. 
Supporting arms consist of the engineers who help lay bridges and mines, the signals who are in charge of all communications, the ordnance which handles the arsenal, electrical and mechanical engineering who are responsible for repairing all vehicles, army aviation which provides air support, air defense which provides protection from enemy air assaults, supply and transport which is responsible for logistically aiding frontline operations and the Army Medical Corps which runs field ambulances as well as hospitals during wartime and peace. Effectively, the operational structure of the Army is like a pyramid. Units, whether from fighting or supporting arms, form the base. They report to brigades, which report to divisions, which report to corps. The buck starts at the level of a unit which may be based on the front line and stops at the core, which may be headquartered in a major city. That's the game. But who are the players? When some people think of the army, they think of the armor, tanks and whatnot. Other people think of the artillery, guns. But of course, before the artillery or the armor came the infantry, ground troops, foot soldiers who fight for the land. This is their story. Welcome to the infantry. The infantry is the single largest arm of the Pakistan army. There was a time when the infantry dominated all armies of the world, but with the development of weapons technology, especially mechanization and air support, and the increased concentration on logistics, the ratio of infantry has dropped in most western armies. In Pakistan's case, however, the infantry continues to dominate by numbers, and there are currently between 180,000 to 200,000 active infantry troops serving all across the country. Historically, the infantry is as old as war itself. Apart from the Mongolians, all armies have depended on the infantry to hold an objective. The concept is simple. The cavalry, then based on horses and now tanks, did the heavy fighting. His job was to clear an objective and plow through his defenses. Today, with the development of air support and artillery, increased firepower has acted as a force multiplier to that concept. But the actual capturing of an objective has always depended on the presence of soldiers on the ground. That's where the infantry comes in. Able to access terrain and in urban warfare, buildings and compounds as well, the infantry establishes force presence on enemy territory. That's why the infantry is universally called by all armies to be the queen of battle. In Pakistan, the infantry is divided up into six regiments. Three of the six, the Punjab, the Baloch, and the Frontier Force, range back to the days of the Raj. Three more regiments have been added since partition. The Azad Kashmir Regiment, the Sin Regiment, and the Northern Light Infantry. All regiments are distinguished by the historical role they have been used in, recruiting patterns, as well as regimental colors and signs. In this episode of We Are Soldiers, you will see the fundamental tenets of basic infantry training. Physical fitness, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and of course, the use of weapons. Is the Pakistani infantry ready to meet the growing challenges of conventional and unconventional security threats?